Welcome back, lore lovers. Today we are diving into the epic saga of Primarch Robot Gulliman, the Lord Commander of the Imperium and the shining beacon of hope in the grim darkness of the Warhammer 40k universe. Known for his unparalleled tactic genius and the founding of the Ultramarines, Gilliman embodies the ideal of leadership and duty. Join me as we explore his storied past, the challenges he faced and his enduring legacy that shaped the Imperium to this day. Robot Gilliman, Primarch of the Ultramarines, was depicted in ancient Remembrancer sketches from the Great Crusade, his life well documented compared to other Primarchs. Like his brothers, Gilliman was created from the Emperor's genetic template, each Primarch imbued with unique abilities. However, the Chaos God intervened, scattering the Primarchs across the galaxy. Gilliman's capsule eventually landed on McCrage, a world of the Eastern Fringe that had maintained a relatively advanced society despite the ravages of the Age of Strife. McCrage, though harsh, had preserved its industry and warp-capable ships, allowing limited contact with neighboring systems during the turbulent warp storms. When Gilliman's capsule was found by a group of hunting magnates, they immediately recognized it as advanced technology. Inside, they discovered a child surrounded by a glowing nimbus of power, and he was brought to Connor Gilliman, one of McCrage's ruling councils. Connor, impressed by the child, adopted him and named him Robout. As Gilliman grew, his exceptional intellect and physical prowess became clear. By age 10, he had mastered every subject taught by McCrage's best tutors, displaying unparalleled insight into history, philosophy and science. His memory was flawless, and his ability to draw accurate conclusions from limited information astounded his teachers. However, his greatest gift was in warfare, which McCrage's society viewed as a highly respected science. Upon reaching adulthood, Gilliman was granted command of a military expedition to pacify Illyrium, a lawless northern region of McCrage filled with warring factions and mercenaries. He led a brilliant campaign, gaining both the submission and respect of Illyrium's warriors. Yet, upon his return to the capital, McCrage Civitas, he found the city in chaos. His foster father, Connor, had been betrayed by his co council Galen, who, in alliance with discontent nobles, had staged a coup. Galen resented Connor's reforms, which had improved the lives of the common people at the expense of the aristocracy, forcing them to invest in public infrastructure and raise living standards for their vassals. Galen's forces attacked the Senate House while Connor was inside, igniting widespread anarchy. By the time Gilliman and his army reached the city, it was burning and the streets were overrun by mobs. Gilliman found his way through the chaos, but arrived at the Senate House too late. The building was in ruins, and amidst the wreckage, he found Connor, gravely wounded but still directing the defense. In his final moments, Connor revealed Galen's betrayal and the conspirators behind the coup. Enraged by his foster father's death, Gilliman led a swift and brutal campaign to restore order. His forces crushed the rebels, executed Galen and his co-conspirators, and hanged the rioters. Gilliman then assumed sole leadership of McCrage dismantling the aristocratic regime that has opposed Connor's reforms. The rebels' lands and titles were seized, and the surviving conspirators were condemned to rebuild the city they had destroyed. With Gilliman in control, McCrage underwent a radical transformation. He established a meritocracy, where individuals were rewarded based on their abilities and loyalty rather than noble birth. The economy was restructured, and advanced technology was shared widely, no longer hoarded by the elite. The military was modernized and expanded, making McCrage a powerful force in the galaxy. Under Gilliman's rule, the planet flourished, unified under his just but iron-fisted leadership. During the time Robot Gilliman was engaged in the pacification of Illyria, the Emperor of Mankind's Great Crusade reached the planet Espandor. There, the Emperor learned of McCrage and his remarkable ruler, Robot Gilliman, a child of extraordinary abilities who could only be one of his last Primarchs. Some suggest the Emperor's arrival was no accident, but guided by knowledge of what he would find. As the Emperor moved toward McCrage, violent warp storms thwarted his fleet, preventing contact for five years. During this time, McCrage underwent significant transformation under Gilliman's leadership. The planet became a model of order and prosperity, with flourishing cities, advanced armies and even interstellar trade routes. Gilliman had studied ancient histories and envisioned a domain beyond McCrage, a realm he called Ultramar. 
When the Emperor finally arrived in 837 Millennium 30, he was impressed by Gilliman's accomplishments. Unlike with other Primarchs, such as Leman Ras or Mortarion, the Emperor greeted Gilliman with trust. Upon learning his true origins, Gilliman swore immediate fealty to the Emperor, understanding he was created for a grand purpose. His extraordinary intelligence and ability to organize were quickly recognized. Gilliman was soon given command of the 13th Legion, the Ultramarines, and he immediately set about transforming them. To Gilliman, a legion was not just soldiers but an entire system, logistics, starships, munitions and recruits, all working in harmony. He intended Ultramar to be more than just a homeworld. It was the center of a vast network, with McCraggy as its fulcrum. This was the beginning of Gilliman's Realm of Ultramar, a project that would span decades. He reorganized the 13th Legion with meticulous care, blending the martial virtues of courage and adaptability with strategic planning and analysis. His reforms created a meritocratic disciplined force that prized individual achievements, yet demanded absolute loyalty to the greater whole. The Ultramarines adopted a new livery of deep blue and gold, with the Ultima symbol as their icon. Under Gilliman's leadership, they vowed to push the Great Crusade even beyond the stars to ensure its success. His vision for Ultramar and the Legion was one of relentless expansion, conquest and order, all in service of the Emperor's grand design for humanity. As the Emperor entrusted Robout Gilliman with command of the 12th expeditionary feat, he wasted no time in expanding the Imperium's reach. With McCraggy as his new base of operations, the freshly named Ultramarines set out to conquer and bring countless wars into Imperial compliance. Gilliman wasn't content with just winning battles. Each planet he brought under the Emperor's banner was fortified, its government organized with precision. His gift for efficient administration turned the Ultramarines' conquest into lasting Imperial strongholds, spreading civilization as much as war. While the fleet's victories multiplied, so did Ultramarines' numbers. Their gene seed was remarkably resilient and under Gilliman's watch, their ranks swelled to unprecedented size. Recruits flowed in, not only from McCraggy, but from every world Gilliman liberated, all carefully selected through a strict meritocratic process. Gilliman's strategic brilliance and the sheer size of his legion meant that wherever the Ultramarines fought, they struck with overwhelming force, often suffering fewer casualties than their peers. By the time Horus was appointed a warmaster, the Ultramarines had become the largest space marine legion in the Imperium, their fleet too vast to remain a single entity. Gilliman divided them into smaller fleets, each capable of operating independently across the far reaches of the galaxy. With over 250,000 Astartes under his command, the 13th Legion stood as an unstoppable force, a power that, by the time of the heresy, made them a threat the traitors couldn't ignore. Yet, for all their successes, a dark memory haunted the Ultramarines, their defeat in the Osiris Cluster years before. Gilliman, ever the strategist, had long planned vengeance. His chance came at Eurydice Terminal, where a deadly Xenos race the Psybirds resurfaced. In a brutal voyage he boarding action, Gilliman and his Ultramarines struck the Psybirds with ferocious precision. Leading from the front, Gilliman confronted the Psybird leader, a massive, psychically powerful creature. With the aid of his chief psyker, Arrow Ptolemy, who sacrificed his life in the battle, Gilliman crushed the alien threat, avenging the Legion's past failure. Though the battle was costly with thousands of Ultramarines lost, Gilliman's victory restored his Legion's honor. It was a reminder that the Ultramarines would pay any price for victory, and under their Primarch's guidance, they were ready for the trials yet to come. Sorry for the short break, but I'm here to remind you that if you are enjoying this journey through the lore, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to Lion Drag. Your support helps the channel grow and reach more lore lovers like you, allowing us to explore even more fascinating tales together. When Warmaster Horus betrayed the Imperium, his first act was to draw Loyalist Legions away from Terra. He ordered Robout Gilliman to lead an expedition to Cult in the Viridian system, claiming a massive orc Wa was forming there. Unbeknownst to Gilliman, the world bearers now loyal to Chaos under Primarch Lorgar were poised to ambush the Ultramarines. The world bearers' surprise attack devastated Gilliman's fleet and the Ultramarines were forced into a fighting retreat. Despite the initial losses, many Ultramarines fought fiercely for their homeworld, leading to a protracted struggle. Gilliman managed to regroup and send a distress call to McCraggy while his remaining forces took up fortified position. As the battle raged on Cult, the world bearers used orbital platforms to destabilize the star, causing irreparable damage to the planet. Gilliman's forces executed coordinated hit and run attacks, eventually slowing the world bearers long enough for reinforcements to arrive. 
However, the battle left called uninhabitable and the ruined storm was summoned to isolate Ultramar from the rest of the galaxy. In the aftermath, Lorgar allied with Angron and the World Eaters, launching a shadow crusade against Ultramar's worlds, devastating 26 of them. Gilliman dragged the traitors to Angron's homeworld, Nuceria, where a fierce battle ensued. As the Ultramarines engaged in a desperate fight against their once allied brothers, Gilliman confronted Lorgar and later Angron. Their battle was fierce, with Gilliman initially holding his ground against both traitor Primarchs. However, Lorgar's sorcery transformed Angron into a demon prince, shifting the tide of battle. Gilliman managed to retreat but not without the scars of defeat, witnessing the horrific transformations of his brothers. Isolated by the ruined storm, Gilliman feared for humanity's future and established Imperium Secundus to safeguard the ideals of the Great Crusade. He initially sought to make Lion L. Johnson its leader but ultimately named Sanguinius the Regent. Tensions arose between Gilliman and L. Johnson over how to handle rebellions and the threat of Conrad curse, leading to conflict within their ranks as they struggled to maintain order amid chaos. In the wake of the Ruined Storm, unleashed by the treacherous world bearers after the Battle of Cult, Robot Gilliman faced a dire threat to the unity of humanity. Cut off from Terra and the uncertain of the Emperor's fate, he sought to preserve the ideals of the Great Crusade by establishing a second interstellar empire, Imperium Secundus. This decision would haunt him as one of his greatest mistakes. Using the ancient Xenos device known as the Pharos, located on the world of Sota, many loyalist space marines were guided to McCraggy. Though wary of appealing power hungry like his brother Horus, Gilliman initially sought to persuade Lionel Johnson of the Dark Angels to lead Imperium Secundus, but their growing distrust hindered this plan. As the formation of the Imperium Secundus unfolded, an assassination attempt by the Alpha Legion almost claimed Gilliman's life. When the Night Lord's Primarch Conrad Curse was unleashed upon McCrage, a battle ensued, culminating in a near catastrophic trap that only the intervention of Iron Warriors Barabas Dantioch could avert. He activated the Pharaohs, teleporting Gilliman and Del Johnson to safety. Upon returning to McCrage, Gilliman named Sanguinius the reluctant regent of Imperium Secundus to avoid any claims of emperorship. However, tensions flared between him and Del Johnson, especially over how to deal with curse and the rebellions that plagued their world. The Lion's insistence on martial law clashed with Gilliman's resistance, leading to a significant fallout. After a devastating suicide bombing, El Johnson bypassed Gilliman's authority, declaring martial law. As chaos erupted in the Illyrium region, the Dark Angels Primarch sought to use mass destruction against the rebels, only for Gilliman to propose a more humane solution. The resulting conflict culminated in Curse's capture and a public trial, where shocking revelations about El Johnson's secret actions ignited further conflict. Ultimately, in a bid to save face and uphold Imperial values, Gilliman and Sanguinius dismissed El Johnson and the Dark Angels from the Imperium Secundus, yet the Lion later sought redemption, offering himself as Curse's jailer. After the trial, the leaders of Imperium Secundus realized their errors and aimed to bridge the Ruin Storm to aid the Emperor on Terra. As they navigated the chaos, they encountered new horrors, including the ominous entity known as the Pilgrim. During an ambush by traitor forces, Gilliman survived an assassination attempt but chose to study the chaos blade used by the attackers. During the Battle of Phyron, Sanguinius had a vision revealing that their true goal was Davin, the world when the Horus heresy had begun. Despite initial skepticism, both Gilliman and El Johnson reluctantly trusted Sanguinius, who took curse abroad his flagship to exploit the Night Hunter's psychic abilities. A mass landing on Davin commenced with Sanguinius striving to avoid betrayal by the Dark Angel's Primarch. The gravity of the situation dawned on L. Johnson, and he and Gilliman recognized the manipulation at play. In a bold move, Gilliman destroyed the Atoms, rejecting Chaos's temptations. On Davin, a fierce battle erupted as Sanguinius fought a demon while Gilliman and L. Johnson attempted to rescue him. Their combined forces finally put aside differences and united against a common enemy culminating in a hard-fought victory that saw Davin obliterated. With the destruction of Davin, a path through the ruined storm of Terra was revealed, but it was heavily guarded by traitor fleets. Thank you for joining me on this exploration of Robot Killiman's remarkable journey. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share and subscribe to Lion Drag for more Lord Leech content. And don't forget to join our Discord community where we can dive deeper into discussions and theories. Until next time, keep the Lord alive. Thank you.